South Dakota is basically known as the pheasant capital of the world. But the thing is, if you've been there pheasant hunting or have just gone through, well, the one thing you may have missed are some absolute giant whitetails. Now, I've been coming to South Dakota for a couple of years now, and we have had incredible luck. In fact, there's some of the biggest whitetails around the country, and where we're hunting, well, it's absolutely unbelievable. Now, I hunt with Cody Warren with Warren Ranches, and how it works, well, we go in and we get a one-year archery lease. So you're in for the entire fall, and it's basically a self-guided hunt. He provides the land to hunt, you hang your stands, get everything ready, and pattern out those big bucks. Well, it's mid-November and these whitetails should be running. It's freezing cold weather right now. It's in the 20s, they just had a snow, and we should be hitting it pretty good. He said a lot of the bucks are starting to chase. So what we're gonna do for our setup, as you can see behind me, we've got a big bunch of trees. They're all surrounding a stock dam. Now, I actually was out here filming years ago, had great luck at this location. Now, what makes this location so good is the fact that we've got cut cornfields all around us, and then we've got standing sunflowers around the stock dam. So a lot of these deer are probably bedding in there as they're chasing during the rut. They're going to need a drink and we've got the water source right there. So we're going to set up. We've got a good wind for this. I'm going to take our stands in there, get set up and hopefully sit this spot either this afternoon or tomorrow morning. Whenever you're trying to do things in the cold, everything is more difficult. And it took a little while to get the stands hung, but once we got them, we decided there was probably only an hour and a half left. We're gonna get up in the tree and sit there for the evening. Well, we just got the tree stands hung and it was not an easy tree. There's not many straight trees, but this one got more crooked as we got up, but we got everything set. But how we're set up is for this bigger opening spot. When you're up high, you can see down the lanes of the sunflowers, down those rows, and I'm hoping we might be able to spot a buck, rattle, grunt, and when he comes out, he's gonna see our decoy. It also makes it so we can funnel the deer exactly to where we want, where our shooting lanes are, and where we've got a good wind. So we've got the water behind us, everything should be set. Now, it's November, there's snow on the ground, it's freezing cold, perfect time for hunting. It was a great setup, so I took my Dave Smith decoy, put it out, faced it toward me, so that way if a buck would come through, hopefully he'd circle between my stand and that decoy, and hopefully we could bring one of these nice bucks in. I wasn't sure how much noise we had made and if we had spooked everything out, but there was only one way to find out. We could do rattling and grunting, and with the fields all around us, well, these deer couldn't see what was going on. So we could use that audio, and then as soon as we got them in, give them a visual, and they locked right in. sitting there a nice buck started coming in right at our decoy now he was locked into this decoy and I was trying to figure out is this a shooter we've only been sitting for probably a half hour and I've already got a buck coming in <laughs> Now my heart started pounding. Everything was happening fast. He was such a borderline buck, but I thought we could probably do better. I wasn't sure quite how old he was, so we decided we're gonna sit back and watch the show. Now I'm sitting there and this buck 
actually snort wheezed at our decoy. I have never seen a buck in the wild snort wheeze at a decoy. This buck was completely fooled. He's making scrapes, pawing at the ground, just mad as can be. As I'm sitting there, the only thing I can keep thinking is, am I a fool for passing this buck up? We're a couple hours in now, and this is our very first day. I could be completely done, but I decided not quite an old enough buck. I'm gonna let him go, and hopefully this wouldn't come back to bite me later on. After an amazing sit on our first day, I decided we need to get out there and get more stands hung. I didn't want to be in a position where if the wind changed, which it was looking like it was going to do, that we were out of options. Now again, this is a self-guided hunt. We're given the land, but we need to scout it set up. The more you're out there, the more you can learn as to what the deer are doing. So we decided to move to a totally new area where we spent most of the day trying to get stands hung and we finally got this set up. We are looking at extremely windy conditions. I think right now we've got gusts probably over 40 miles an hour. I'm not going to be able to take any shots by more than 15, 20 yards. So we're pretty limited. We're kind of going to use this evening as a scouting mission. We can see a lot from where we're sitting. We could see for probably close to a mile and we could see exactly what was going on. In fact, there was a big slough over to our right. We had a pick field in front of us on both sides. Then there was a small little bunch of trees. There was no question the rut was on. We were seeing bucks chasing does flying through the water. The problem is they just weren't coming into our area. So our first option, sit back a little ways, put that decoy out and see if we could pull those bucks right to us. bucks coming in, lots of deer moving around. We got an eyeful. And a lot of them, they just seemed to be staying in this little group of trees. A few were interested in our decoy. In fact, one buck, well, he looked to be pretty thick. He came and nailed that decoy and knocked him over. Now, it was so dark we could hardly see, but I was watching him through the binoculars, and, well, he took a toll on the decoy. We decided it's a great setup, tons of deer moving through, but we were bow hunting and there were just no archery shots. We needed to get closer to that main trail. So we went up there, there was actually a log pile right in front of their trail. So instead of trying to get up in the tree, I decided forget it. We're gonna brush in a blind and we're gonna set up right off that trail. I'll be the first to say I always want nice and cold weather when we're out hunting the rut. Well, we got the cold weather. We've been hunting here in South Dakota for several days now, and we finally got some really nice, cool, cold conditions. I think we've got these deer pretty well figured out. A lot of the bucks have been crossing through a center point, and we got a blind in there yesterday, so we're gonna sit there all day. We're set up right by that log pile and the thing is a lot of those bucks are just moving off in the distance. Over our decoy, I was hoping our decoy would draw them out of those trees right to us, but no such luck. We saw one really cool looking buck, just a goofy rack on him. I don't know if he had a double main beam or what's going on. He's a big mature buck and if I get a crack at him, well I'm definitely going to take it. Now I decided I can't sit back and wait anymore. I've already been hunting for several days. I don't have all the time in the world. It's time to make a big move and try to get in closer to where these deer are coming. The problem with doing that, when do you do it? You never know when the best time. Do you go in midday? Do you go in in the middle of the night? We weren't sure when was going to be the best option, but I knew I needed to get a blind in there and I needed to get in there right away before we missed all the action. Winchester Deadly Passion is presented by Cutty Back Digital, Hard Hitting Easton Arrows, Hunter's Safety System, Winchester Repeating Arms, Swarovski Optic, Scent Killer Gold with Hunt Dry Technology. Apply it, dry it, and go hunt. Rage Broadheads, leading the evolution in lethal technology. And Golden Triangle Whitetail, your hunt of a lifetime awaits.
anytime you're making a big move like going right in the deer's bedding area or their core area, well, it's risky, but it can also have the biggest rewards. So I decided if this is what we're gonna do, we have to be smart about it. So we decided we're gonna go in midday. One of the good things about hunting an area for quite a long time is you really can start telling what the deer are doing. Now we've been sitting in a tree stand over a cut cornfield, then we moved, we had another blind that was near a log pile, and now we're finding a lot of these deer are in the section of trees. Now this isn't a huge section of trees, but it's holding a lot of these deer. So what we're gonna do we're gonna set up a blind, we're gonna play the wind, try to get in as tight in these cedars as possible and put the decoy out. Hopefully the deer will be focused on the decoy, not on our blind. We can set it up, we're gonna try hunting it this evening, see what happens. Once we got in the blind and settled in, boy, it did not take long. We had deer literally all around us. Now I'm thinking we're right in the money, right where we need to be. There's tracks all around here. In fact, we've got a huge scrub right out in front of the blind. I know this has been a highway for the deer. I'm just hoping by us moving in, hopefully we don't push them out. But I think if we sit tight, we've got several days left to the hunt. I think if we stay right here, we're gonna be pretty good. Now, of course, we're hitting during the peak of the rut, so that sure helps. But this is the area all the deer were frequenting. As long as we didn't spook them, I figured we were really gonna have an eyeful for the next several days. As far as I'm concerned, when you're sitting there and you have a buck, I don't care how big the deer is, coming into your decoy, it is an adrenaline rush. And we had it happening over and over and over. the decoy and he was so tempting. I don't know how many brow tines he had, but he was a beautiful buck, just at least probably one ear too young. I really thought about it. I even got to full draw just to check it out and uh, no matter what I did, I just couldn't make him old enough. He was really cool though and he was completely convinced. Our decoy had him so fooled, he had not a care in the world except for posturing to that buck. Now finally, as we were sitting there, we saw that big goofy rack buck. He started coming in, but for whatever reason, he just wasn't interested in coming in and fighting our decoy. Now I have no idea why. He seemed to be like the king of the jungle around this place and was pushing every other deer around. But for some reason, he just wouldn't come into our decoy. Winchester Deadly Passion is presented by Winchester, the American legend. Matthews, catch us if you can. Field and Stream, where traditions begin. ScoutLookWeather.com, download the free Deer Log app for your smartphone. Moose Utility Division, demand the brand. Bog Pod, versatility defined. M&P by Smith & Wesson. And Peak Antifreeze, Right with your car and wallet. Peak, run true. Closed captioning is brought to you by the 4 and one Woodsman from Zippo Outdoor. The next day, will that crazy brow time buck that I passed he came back again. I don't know if he was taunting me or just making sure that I'd made the right decision, but there he was, all the time in the world to take the shot once again. I was hoping that maybe one of those real big bucks would be strolling by. Two bucks is better than one, double the decoys, and maybe one of these bucks would see that and come running in. Hopefully it would only be a matter of time. 
We've got a really good wind today and that's one of the important things is knowing where your wind is in the morning so you can set your decoy up accordingly. As you can see, we've been sitting in this spot, but every day when the wind changes, well, we move that decoy just a little bit. We want those bucks to come in facing our decoy and I wanna make sure I have a broadside shot. So I've been kind of moving them around it's really been working out great. We just can't get one of those big bucks to commit to our decoy. Some ways, I don't know if it's helping us or hurting us. And that's kind of the dilemma with the decoy. It was starting to wind down and get toward the end of the hunt. Now, I had canceled trips, moved things around because I believed in this place. There's that goofy rag buck. He's coming. wasn't long and we had that goofy rack buck come back through. Now this time he was licking his lips, staring at the decoy, and I thought we might have had him fooled. He would be a perfect deer. just a little too old and a little too smart. Something didn't seem right to him and he was not having it. Well, I thought it was finally gonna happen. He came right in. I thought he was absolutely committed to our decoy this time, but unfortunately, he just didn't want to come inside bow range. Now, the problem is he's all keyed up. He's after our decoy. I don't want to be taking a long shot. If he hears any noise at all, he's already going to be spooked and he'll probably jump the string. So I'm really hoping for a 50 yard shot in the end. That's not too much to ask. We've had, I don't know, 20, 30 bucks inside our decoy range. So I'm not sure why he can't come in. I had been here way longer than I normally would whitetail hunt in a place. But when you've put in so much time and you know what it can produce, well, you don't want to leave. I knew it could just be an extra hour, just one more day, and it might come together. After over 10 days of hunting, we had finally spotted that big buck that Cody had been talking about. The one with the double main beam. He was living right in this area, and I knew he was in there pushing deer around. Well, finally, he came down the path, and I thought it was going to be over. It looked like he was coming right to us. He got into about 70 yards, wasn't having it. Thought for sure he must have heard the grunts, rattling, snort wheeze, something. He saw our decoy, there's no question. But the problem is, he didn't come in. I don't know why. I don't know what caused him to turn, what his reasoning was. Didn't want anything to do with it. Kept going. It just didn't work out. There's nowhere I wanted to be more than right here in South Dakota and get one of these bucks. It really came down to, well, maybe a little bit of stubbornness, whatever it is. The determination of putting in all that time, I didn't want to leave yet but I knew time was ticking and eventually I was gonna have to make a move. I know something caught my eye, looked back over toward the decoy, and there was a beautiful buck walking parallel right past my decoy. Now this is exactly what I've been talking about. It's one of those deer, you don't have to think about it, you don't have to talk yourself into it. This was a shooter, and he was right at my decoy.
can't even believe it right now. I mean, th this has been tough hunting. We've had big bucks, but it's all been, you know, our moves. My cameraman and I have been moving around, setting up blinds, just trying to figure the deer out. <laughs> Anyone thinks that patience doesn't pay off, this is it. I've passed some beautiful bucks and I've sat here days on end just about killing myself for passing them. And now it worked out awesome. I could have gone home again another year empty handed, but not this time. I got it done. Wow! Look at the size of these tines! When he came in, all I could see is points. He's a mainframe eight. Just an awesome buck. We've been out hunting at Cody Warren's, Warren Ranches, just an incredible whitetail destination and a lot of fun. Probably one of the most rewarding hunts I've ever done. We put in our time, we made the changes, and now I've got an absolutely old, beautiful, mature buck.